even at even at ballparks and, and, and stadiums, uh, you know, everywhere started honoring more veterans, started honoring our nation, our flag, especially singing God Bless America instead of the seventh inning stretch to take me out to the ballpark. Now, for the most part, some stadiums still do, some don't. New York City, all the sports teams in New York City, especially the baseball teams, at the seventh inning stretch, which is a national pastime tradition, every single time the Mets and Yankees play, in New York City, they do God Bless America, and usually a massive American flag is brought out, surrounded and being held by veterans or first responders. And that's done every single time, and both teams are committed to do that for the rest of their lives as long as they play in New York City. Now, this was an image that was sent to me by a, a, a friend of mine, a co-worker, and he said, Bo, this is very impressive. And just to give you an idea of how we came together, I don't know where this is in America, I don't know what street, what city, what state, uh, but this was just an average ordinary city in America, and shortly after the attacks, this happened. Mm. The proud nation, the proud people, maybe they couldn't go down there and help, maybe they couldn't go down there and supply us with something, but guess what? We're going to honor you and support you by waving that great symbol of American flag. Uh, and that's really beautiful to see that, because that's something that we don't talk about. Now... There's no doubt about it, ladies and brethren, that we did suffer that day. The eagle did shed a tear. No doubt about it, we suffered a tremendous loss. And how we live today is a testament to some of the securities that we have to go through. You, know, you go to the airport, you practically have to strip in order to go through our plane. But these are some of the things that we have to do in order to protect and ensure the safety. But also, I like to think of how we came together as a people. Now, I had never seen this video before that I... My iPad doesn't have great sound, but this was a, a Budweiser commercial that aired for the 2002 Super Bowl once and never aired again. I had never seen it until early this year, and it really, it really is impressive to hear. And all it is is the team of five sales, the largest breed of horses in the world, traveling through America, to all the different parts of the countryside, as a show of solidarity that we are together going and bringing the spirit of all those Americans together. And finally, at the end here, as it approaches Liberty State Park, facing where the tower stood, it's amazing what these horses do now and how they got them to do that. They all bow their heads and pick up their legs and kneel in reverence to the World Trade Center. Amen. No worries. But something like that is very, very special. It means a lot. And I say sometimes pictures mean more than words. Now, ladies and brethren, why do I do this? Well, I do this so that, one, we don't forget the tragedies that happened, uh, that we honor the memory of those, and hopefully that will never happen again. But more importantly, because I believe right now we need it more than ever. We need solidarity. We need to come together. And it's sad that it takes a catastrophe like the World Trade Center, the loss of almost 3,000 lives for us to come together as Americans and human beings. It takes a catastrophe like that for us to be put up against the corner and say, hey, we're badgers, we're not going to allow ourselves to be taken over. We're going to fight to the bitter end. And what I try to convey is, don't wait until the next tragedy to be an American, to come together as one people, as one nation. Regardless of what we feel, regardless of how we think about, and Freemasonry <coughs> means more to me in that aspect because in Freemasonry, and we're not all perfect, we've got a lot of people that have done wrong as Freemasons, but Freemasonry has been around for centuries. And their basic core value, whatever else you want to talk about, their basic core value is that we can meet as men together, regardless of what we believe in, of what color of our skin is, of what our creed or culture, or what we call our God. But the fact that we can enter a room and meet as men, regardless if you're a king or a president, that's what's important. And that's what the world needs to see. And it's sad that in the Masonic lodges, we, we do all this greatness and then we leave and we leave it behind. And we should let the world know how we can meet. Now, I may not agree with Gene. I may not always like Gene. But as Masons, in a room, I have to respect him. And we are equals. And that's what matters. And it's sad to see today how we turn ourselves apart and I hope that you don't wait for the next 
major terrorist attack or the next catastrophe to happen for us to come together as a people. That's very important. Now, what is the greatest symbol that we have in our nation? What signifies who we are? Not a bird, not a building, just like a masonry. It's not a historic lodge building. It's not the oldest minutes in the world or the fanciest jewel, but it's the mason themselves. Wherever masons meet, that is the treasure of Freemasonry. That is where we are. We're tenants. We're tenants of this institution, and we are, it is our job coming upon us to make it that much better than what we received it, so that our next generation of tenants can do good with it as well. That's what Freemasonry is to us. That's what we should do. But ladies and brethren, this is the greatest symbol we have, and it's very humble. Now, it seems like lately we're tearing ourselves apart because of this symbol. Now, I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to, to, to pass judgment on anybody. But as far as I know, this flag has done nothing to nobody. I have never seen or never heard this flag jump out of the pedestal and knock somebody in the head. I, I don't know, maybe it happened to you. I don't know, maybe Gene, you got a knot, maybe it maybe happened to you. But Well, I was coming for the goal that was walking away. <laughs> But in all honesty, this flag here symbolizes who we are as people and as America. Amen. It's not a land, it's not a place, it's a dream. Now my father was an immigrant and came here from Cuba in the early 50s, as well as my mother. He came here with $9 in his pocket and the clothes on his back because he saw what this flag had done for so many others before him. It inspired him to come here and make something better of himself. Now... This flag is not to be taken lightly. It's not going to give herself easy. It's not going to give you your freedoms and your the citizenship. It's not going to give you those rights. You're going to have to earn it. You're going to have to work hard to call this your flag. It just doesn't come easy. And that's the sad part. We take advantage and we, take, we, think, we don't think much of it. But this flag here has given millions of people the opportunities because it has been paid in full with the blood of our honored dead. For over two centuries, this flag has represented who we are. And this is very important. So I say to you, honor it, salute it, pray for it, stand for it, defend it, protect it. Don't kneel for it. Don't jump around for it, but honor it. Men are men are bad. This flag is not bad. This flag has done nothing to anybody except give them opportunity and hope and a beacon of light for those who have not, who had suffered. This offered my father a way of life to come to this country to give his sons a better life. And as he always told me, no matter where he worked, his name was Israel, but he always was put by the nickname of Izzy. And he always <clears throat> confided in us and used to say, uh, they used to ask him, Izzy, where, where are you from? He said, I'm American. He goes, I know that. He said, but where were you born? He goes, Cuba. Oh, so you're Cuban American. He said, no, I'm American. <laughs> he said, this is my country now. This flag, this country saw it. In their, in their eyes to give me the opportunity and to allow me to come here to become a citizen and to reap the benefits of it and furthermore to give my children a better <coughs> life. They are going to do better for me than I did because of this flag. Because so no, he never ever wore a Cuban flag or American flag. He never wore a Cuban flag. Everywhere he went, everything he did, serving his community, serving his country, whatever he did, he did it as an American. And so the day he died, he never uttered the words Cuban American or Irish American or any of he always said, I am an American because that's what I am. I gave up my right as a Cuban, and this is the country that opened the doors when I needed the most. And I will die for it. And that's very special. So, what I say to you all is take it into your heart, spread that good cheer, let the world know how we come together as a people, and don't wait for that tragedy to happen. And as Brother Masons, I, told, I, I charge you as well, go into the world and let the world know the beauties of who we are. Toleration, moderation, equality, justice, these are strong words, truth. These are very strong and powerful words. And there's very few nations in the world that actually give you the right to protest and burn the very flag that's given you the right to do. Right. That's the crazy part about it. Very few countries. Go to Saudi Arabia and try to burn their flag out in the square and see what's going to happen to you. Your head will be in a basket somewhere. This flag actually gives you the right to, to burn it, to desecrate it, and it's that right that it stands for that has given you that absolute right to do that. And that's very special. No other flag in the world does what that flag does. And as Masons here in the United States, the American right, we are one of the only jurisdictions that I've seen that at every opening of the lodge, after the prayer we open the lodge, is we pledge our allegiance to that flag. 
because we are here today as Masons in this country because of that flag, not because of anything else. So ladies and gentlemen, may God bless all of you. May God bless the United States of America. May God bless all our veterans, past and present, and all first responders, because it is their sacrifice that we be here today as Freemasons and free people. And most especially, may God continue to shine his blessings on Freemasonry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I didn't keep you here too long, but thank you for your time and for allowing me to share my story with you. Well, you learned a lot coming to my life when you were a young sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a pleasure to be here.